Good afternoon everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be a little different from normal. Uh, because of the rain, it's raining pretty hard. Uh, I thought we would do something a little different and do some work on the computer. What I'm going to be doing is talking about Adobe's new neural filters, more specifically the uh, depth aware haze tool that they've they've introduced. Uh, I've had a bit of a play around and it's quite a cool little tool. Uh, the other one I'm going to be looking at is the sky replacement tool as well. So the, there's a couple of new features that they've added that for landscape photographers I think could work really really well. So I'll uh, switch over to the computer and I will talk you through them. Okay, so the first image that I'm going to use in ex as an example is one that I took at Wisman's Wood. Uh, this was a really nice shot. Uh, the only problem was uh, the distractions up in the canopy, and I couldn't quite get the light that I was after. And I all, and when I was there, I was thinking that having a bit of mist would work really well. So up in the toolbar, you have your filters and under there you have neural filters uh, so this will bring up the workspace for all the neural filters it'll pop it up on the right hand side and by default it'll take you into the skin smoothing and the style transfer uh, but what we're after here is the beta filters and under here you have some really cool options so we'll Give most of these a miss anyway uh, so you have the smart portrait there's a couple of extra down at the bottom here like color eyes uh, but the one we are after in particular is the depth aware haze tool these are all in beta so don't expect them to be a hundred percent but what we'll do is we'll enable this and what it's going to do is straight off is analyze the entire image and then try and work out where it feels it can put the haze and straight off the bat it has done a really really good job uh, so much so that I was actually really impressed by this uh, top right you have two options so I'm hoping at some point that they add a few more in here uh, but the main one is obviously the the amount of haze uh, by default it will set it at 50 uh, but you can go from 0 to 100 depending on your preference and all you need to do is just slide it left to reduce the amount of haze in the image or slide it right to increase the amount for this in particular it probably doesn't need a massive amount of haze so we'll say maybe 39 40 is quite a nice amount of haze and it just it it reduces the amount of contrast in the canopy and just gives it that nice ethereal atmospheric look which at the time I wasn't able to get. The second option that you have is warmth. Now this one I've had a play around with it and it can go you can add too much warmth really easy uh, so for this one, it, it's set to zero. If you go right, that will add warmth. If you go left, it will make the image cooler. So if we just add a bit of warmth, as you can see, it just gives it that warm glow. If I move it to the left, it will do the opposite. Now this is something that uh, you can add too much and add too much really quickly. So if I, if I go right up to the right hand side, that's just way too much. and It just does not look right. So for this type of image, I would say you probably don't want to be going above, say maybe eight, just to, just to give it a hint of warmth. But I actually prefer, prefer it without the warmth. So I'll leave that unchecked and what you can do is once you're happy with your selections for the depth of depth of wear haze, uh, you then have the option to output it to a new layer 
Uh, you can set it to current layer, but if you set it to current layer, that is going to be a destructive way of doing things. I'd avoid that at all costs. Uh, you can duplicate the layer with and without a mask. You can output it to a smart filter. So if you feel that you, you're unsure about whether or not this is the look that you're going for, or at a later date you, th you think, mm, I wouldn't mind some warmth, uh, by setting it to a smart filter, that gives you the option to go back in to be able to re-edit these options. So for now, all I'm going to do is just output it to a new layer, press OK, and then that's added that. So that is without, and that is with the haze. And uh, I think it makes it look really cool. Uh, and just at a few clicks of a button, which is absolutely brilliant. It's far from perfect. So when I was looking at this, if I zoom in, you can see there is a little line down here. And over in the right hand side, it's a very similar thing here. So it's almost like a bit of banding across parts of the image it wasn't able to work out. Uh, unless you're looking for that, it's harder to see in this image. Uh, but if I go to this coat water image I took a few weeks ago, uh, if we do the same thing, so if I go filters, neural filters, give it a chance to load into the beta filters and then enable the depth aware haze. Don't need to change any settings. Here, it's a lot more obvious that it hasn't been able to work out what it wants to add haze to and what it doesn't. So we've got this banding across things that it just doesn't know what to do with. Uh, and some of this isn't quite right. And it's, it's got haze across here, but not the same amount of haze on this side. And then it's just completely missed this section here and along the bottom as well. So it is far from perfect. And I wouldn't go out taking shots with the intention of relying on this tool to add in haze for you. Uh, but for some images, it may work absolutely brilliant. For, for others, it may not. But the fact that you can potentially add in haze within a few clicks of a mouse, I think is absolutely brilliant. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to how this is gonna progress and what they're gonna do to, uh, to improve this. What would be nice if there was a, a few more options within this. So you maybe have, you've got the option to increase and decrease the amount of haze that you want, maybe adding some sort of depth detection option as well would be brilliant or perhaps adding in some sort of graduated filter that allows you to manipulate this in a different way or adding a plus and minus brush tool to allow you to add to the sections that it it just doesn't understand or doesn't know that either require or don't require haze. So there's definitely room for improvement, but I think this is a really good tool and it's, it's only going to get better. That's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about for the haze tool. Uh, the other one is also brand new to Photoshop and that is the sky replacement tool. So under edit, you now have the option for sky replacement. And this brings up a little dialog box that allows you to select between a whole bunch of pre-installed skies or by pressing the plus button at the bottom, you can create your own skies. But once you've selected the sky, it then will replace the one that exists in your image with the one that's selected. And this, again, I was blown away by this. This has worked extremely well. The likes of Luminar have had this for a little while. And from my understanding is that theirs does a really good job as well. Uh, but this just, this is equally as good, I think. Uh, and you have a whole bunch of extra options to allow you to manipulate the sky and manipulate the foreground. I haven't got into too much with the foreground adjustments and I've only messed around with 
some of the settings for the sky itself, but the ability to be able to flip the sky and allow you to sort of move that around is just really cool. If you find that the sky isn't quite in the right position, you have the option to move it. If, like this one, it's not big enough, you have the option to scale your sky, and that just makes it bigger, and then you can shift the sky around to uh, to make it work with the, the foreground image that you have. Uh, you also have the option to adjust the brightness and the temperature of your sky. So for this, the foreground's fairly warm. I know the sky is probably not the most ideal for this one, but if I needed to, I could just warm that up to try and make that match the foreground just so that it doesn't look out of place. And what I was really impressed with with this particular image was the fact that it's it's got the sky in all of the gaps in between the tree so if you were to do this manually this would be really difficult and very time consuming you'd have to mask out certain parts and then refine the edges but this has done an absolutely amazing job working out what's tree what's branches and then what's the sky behind it if i just move this around you can see that it's basically done everything behind the tree. It's, it's cut out the tree 100%. And the same with the horizon. This isn't the straightest of lines, but it's managed to get that no problem at all. And again, like with the haze tool, you have the option to output this. Uh, you have less options, so you have the option to either put it to a new layer or a duplicate layer. Uh, what would be cool is it was if you had the option to be able to do masking with this as well, or be able to create this as a smart filter so that if you made a mistake, you could go back in and do something different. But for the most part, I think it, this is absolutely brilliant. Definitely a useful tool to have. Uh, what I would like to be able to use this with is Astro. So for Astro, you're almost always taking a shot of the foreground and the landscape and then separate shots for the sky. And to be able to cut out the landscape to then fit with the Astro shots would just be brilliant. So I've not yet given that a go, but that is definitely going to be something that I'm trying. And if this is anything to go by, it should do a really good job. Once you're uh, happy with it, you press OK, and then it creates your layers for your sky replacement. And it will also add in any of the adjustments that you made to the color temperature and the brightness. So as I mentioned, the neural filters are all in beta. So don't expect them to be 100%. They, they seem, from what I've tried, they seem to be good, but don't expect them to be perfect. The sky replacement tool, I think, is good, and I'm I'm probably going to use it on some images, not all, but yeah, it, I like the way it works. It's nice and easy, and it, and it seems to be doing a decent job on all of the images that I've tried, uh, and I've tried some difficult images as well. Uh, I've yet to try the Astro shots that I've taken, but. I will be giving those a go and seeing how well it does on those as well. So this latest update I think is pretty cool and yeah, it's uh, it's going to be pretty exciting to see what else they come out with. A couple of the neuro filters that they haven't enabled yet look quite interesting, like the uh, the denoise. So Topaz Labs have a an AI based denoise tool and I. Gave that a go on one of the demos, and I was just blown away. I had a an owl shot that was particularly noisy, purely because it was just an older camera, and it was dark, so I had to ramp up the ISO, uh, and it just I was blown away how well that actually dealt with the noise without losing too much details. So I'm hoping the the one from Adobe does a very very similar job. I think that would be really, really good. 
the other thing with the Sky replacement tool, I know that um, the one from Luminar doesn't do this either, but what would be really cool is if they get to the stage where they can replace the reflections in water as well, or re reflections in general. So I've got shots where you've got a sky, and obviously the sky is then reflected in the water. So what would be really good is if you, say, replace the sky, that it recognises that there's a reflection of the sky as well, and then it can replace both at the same time and obviously invert everything so that it it does the reflection in a really good way really good way it'll be interesting to see how they how they go with this and what they do to progress it so hopefully you've enjoyed the video uh sorry it wasn't out and about taking some photos um but i did think that these features were actually really good and thought it would be uh, good to do a little video on them hopefully in the future i'm going to be doing a few more videos like this um hopefully with a better setup um in the process of upgrading the table which i might do a video for let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, did you enjoy the video? Do you want to see more of these types of videos? And if you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, uh, hit the subscribe button. And please, please, please leave a comment down below. I'd be interested to see what you think about these features as well. Uh, are you using them? Uh, is it something that you, you're just not interested in? Or are you going to be looking to try and implement it? within some of your photos in the future. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think. Uh, so for now, I will catch you on the next video and hopefully you all take care and keep safe. Bye.